God is still good and we're here, still working it out. Amen. Amen. And we're still being blessed. I just want to give you a little bit. I want to encourage people today. I want to highlight this. That when God gives you something okay. and you hear God speaking to you, uh -huh. I'm going to say that you need to write it down. Mm. You need to write it down because there's a reason. And maybe you don't want to get to it right then and there. Mm -hmm. But you need to set some time aside to get into what he told you, what he's spoken to you. And sometimes you need to write it down because you might need to remember. Mm -hmm. It might be for someone. Right. It might need to encourage you during a difficult time in your life. Yes. What God spoke to you. Yes. So it was weird that, because I almost forgot I had this Sunday, but I remember God kept saying, he kept saying these three words to me. Okay. The harlot, the harbinger, and the hostage. All right. Wow. I said, wait a minute, God, why do you keep saying this to me? Wow. And he, he kept saying it over and over. And then finally, you know, sometimes you wake half sleep. I was like, well, let me write this thing down. Because he kept saying to me, the harlot, the harbinger, and the hostage. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't sure how we were going to go about this. Until a pastor had preached on that um, Tuesday, I believe it was, he talked about being renewed, mm -hmm. and he talked about getting hit, and I said, okay, I see where we're going with this. Because okay. at one moment, I saw something on TikTok okay. about how people said that uh, when Hosea married Gomar, I believe it was, he said how people, how the body of Christ is like Gomar, sometimes we only come to God when we want something, oh, yeah. when we need something. Wow. And sometimes, I, I hate to hurt your feelings, wow. sometimes the body of Christ, we're like harlots with God. It's only good while he's blessing us. Wow. But if we need to do something for God, we fight doing that. We make excuses for doing that. And then when we're in a difficult situation, we call on God again. But while everything was going good, maybe we didn't pray as much. Maybe we didn't worship as much. Maybe we didn't look forward to the things that God told us to do in our, in our calling, in our assignment. So we paid like Omar that God got to come back and get us. So we don't need to play the harlot. But what he really wanted me to talk about was Rahab. But I'm going to give you a verse, just one, just one. John 15 and 16, because I said, God, I need to give him a key verse, and then you can go, I'm going to give you the, the chapters, I ain't going to give you all the verses, you can go and read it back for yourself. God, I like this part, it says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, only to amplify, and I have appointed and placed and purposely planted you, so that you would go and bear fruit and keep on bearing, and that your fruit will remain and be lasting so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, as my representative, uh -huh. he may get to you. Right. The message once said, you didn't choose me, but remember, I chose you. Okay. And put you in the world to bear fruit, fruit that won't spoil. Uh -huh. As fruit bearers, whatever you ask the Father in relation to me, he gives to you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks. Thanks. So I want to remind someone, God didn't, you didn't choose God, God chose you. All right. yeah. okay. And you have a choice whether you're going to respond properly. Uh -huh. And now how do you align that up with Rahab? Hmm. Well, let's see. Uh -huh. The definition of a harlot. Everyone knows, you know, some people want to use the term of a uh, HOE, which is a garden tool. But nowadays we give them different names. We call them, uh, what is it, dots and all this other stuff. And we get in different symbolisms. But a harlot was a person who has sex someone in exchange for money. It says the scripture is one who forsakes the true God and worship idols. See, we thought it was just about being prostitution. It says, forsakes God, the true God, uh -huh. and worship idols. That's what it says. Uh -huh. It says, is a servant a rogue or a cheat? What do you mean by that? Mm -hmm. If you only go into God when you want something, okay. you expect an exchange for it, you're being a cheat. Uh -huh. When you go to God for something and then he give you what you want, then you forsake him because he gave you what you asked for and you go worship other idols. Okay. They uh -huh. said, what do you mean, Elder Dillard? He said, typically the thing that you serve the most is your God. Mm -hmm. So if you don't spend time with wow. God and you put your job, that job is your God. Wow. Um, if you spend, uh, we have to say, if you do, if you don't want your children more, uh -huh. the children is your God. Uh -huh. Now see, there's a difference between loving your children and doting on your children. That means whatever they get, they do something. You stop what you're doing uh -huh. to deal with the child. Uh -huh. um, sometimes your spouse, unfortunately, uh -huh. you do not do this right. You can make them your God. Okay. You can make money your God. Uh -huh. Some people like, okay, we like sports. Okay. Uh -huh. Now we know how people do. We act like they can't come to church on Sunday. All right, yeah. But they will spend ten thousand dollars to get a good box seat. Oh, wow. Hold it, that's minimum. Wow. That's minimum. Wow. And that's putting you up in a decent seat. You got to pay good money to be in being a, on a cowboy stadium. Wow. You got to have good money to be in a giant stadium. Wow. And, and and when you get this box, everything's included and paid for. Wow. But that seems to be your God. Okay. But the church asked for an offering. That you don't get out somebody. You want to give a speech. <laughs> But God blessed you to be able to have money. They'll be home. There's some people I know right now that will be up and early on time. 
in the cold uh, tailgate uh -huh. at Green Bay uh -huh. in every state. As a matter of fact, Modella does a commercial. Uh -huh. They showed the man getting up early in the snow uh -huh. and driving all the way to the Green Bay Packers Stadium to start tailgating. Uh -huh. But if you ask them to get up early and come to church for 30 minutes, and then you turn around and tell somebody, I have a relationship with God. I don't need the church. That's a lie. Wow. I, I, some of y'all are harlots with that because if you don't want no part of the church, you don't want no part of God. I'm tired of y'all oh, thinking Jesus. Yes. You missed that part of the Bible. That's it. Because he told Peter, upon, my, upon this rock, build my church. The church may not be a building, but it's people. So you can't tell me you have a problem with the church that God has established and still tell me you stay sanctified there with the Holy Ghost. And you're in the Bible. No, you're not. There's plenty of people who do wrong. There's yes. plenty of people who play hard at you with God. There's plenty of people who play hard at you with their jobs in the government. We still paying taxes. Yes. We still voting. Yes. We still got to deal with our commander in chief whether we like him or not. That's right. But I don't see nobody leaving the country. No. I don't see nobody. I don't see nobody talking about I'm getting on the next jet plane leaving. Uh -huh. I won't be back again. <laughs> but you're still here standing. Some of us benefit from these tax breaks, but that's okay. When we not benefit, we don't like them no more. We do God the same way. God, I asked you for a house, you blessed me. God, I asked for this and you blessed me. But when God asks you to go bless somebody else, you fight me. You being a harlot. And then you go, then someone must have the audacity to go back to God and say, God, what will you do for me if I do this? And then God will turn around and say, Haven't I done enough? Wait a minute, if you wake up, I'm, some of y'all need to understand that people, people take they laugh at me because I say, what was I? I'm, I'm alive and I have a job. Yes. The first part you've been thinking, if I wake up, I'm already blessed. Yes. If I get to open my eyes, that means I get another opportunity to be with God and do what He calls me to do. Yes. There's some people who do not get to wake up. Yes. Then I have the ability to work. Some of y'all miss that, the ability to move. Listen, I don't care what you say. When you're confined and sitting still, your muscles start to mess up on you. That's why they call it physical therapy. They try to get you to move your legs and stuff. Because it gets stiff. Yes. And you think to sit still is going to do something for you. No, you got to get up. You got to move. Walk, moon slide, hop, skip the mile, but you got to do something. Yes, sir. To get your body warmed up so you can move. And as Pastor said, you're going to get hit. So if you wanted to stay there and take punishment, that's on you. Because I need to fight back. I can't let you keep whooping on me, beating on me for no reason. Think I'm scripture's going to sit there and take it. He didn't build me to sit here and be a, be a wimp. He didn't build you or make you to be a punching bag, Kendrick. Yes, he told you you're a greater. Yeah, yeah. You could be a warrior. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can tell the devil, no, that ain't, that ain't what the Bible is. Right. Because what, what, what did he do to Jesus? He said, he says, he says if you leave here, he said, the angels will catch you. Hey, 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 wait a minute. One should not tempt God, devil. You can turn the stone into bread. No man should not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeded out of God's mouth. Yes. So we're talking about the harlotries that happen. But what I liked about this part was, I want y'all to catch this. Okay. Oh when they went to spy out the land, because we know that in Joshua 2, you know, that's, where, that's where it's at, Joshua 2, they said he spent out, spent, sent out two spies. Okay. And when they got there, they got there and they heard about them. The king of Jericho heard about them coming. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing, they spied out, they got to the city, and they went to the prostitute's house. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I know some of y'all got a question. <laughs> Because y'all be questioning, because sometimes back in the day, uh -huh. on my grandmother's day, uh -huh. it's been known that sometimes some of the preachers would slip and they would be at the house. Uh -huh. And my grandfather uh -huh. would be the one to get the call to go get them from the girl house. Uh -huh. Sometimes somebody had to have a little more power. Uh -huh. Hey, brother, you, uh, you know where he is? Yeah, yeah, let's go get him. Uh -huh. Let's go get him. That's right. And they had to go get him. And then they let him know, you still come to church, but don't, don't, don't you act like you're going to get up and. Do nothing crazy until you show some true repentance. But this is what happened. They went to the prostitute's house. And it says that when they got there, this is what I like. This is what I like. Rahab was a prostitute. By all rights, the harlot, nobody would really deal with her. But I want you to know this is the part about God choosing someone. They could have went to any prostitute's house in the city. They ended up at Rahab's. Rahab said, look here. Everyone in the land is afraid of terror. That's what the Bible says. For we have heard how the Lord made a dry path for you through the Red Sea when you left Egypt. Isn't it funny how God's testimonies reach other people yes. and non-believers? Uh -huh. It says, we know what you did to Shion, Og, and the two Amorite kings east of the Jordan River. 
whose people are completely destroyed. No wonder our hearts are melted. No one has the courage to fight after hearing such things. For the Lord your God is the supreme God of the heavens above the earth below. How does she know that? Mm. Off a testimony. God put something in her that she knew. So she said, look here. Look here. She told the people when they went there, they already left. Mm -hmm. They already left. Mm -hmm. God chose Rahab, the harlot, to set up the victory for the kingdom of Israel. How many times have you been, your assignment is go somewhere and deal with a harlot? Mm -hmm. And you don't know that harlot might already know about God and testimony in your life, but you're afraid to talk to her. Uh -huh. Hold on, let me let me the school. Harlotry is not just gender. Okay. Not a woman all the time. Oh, so it's some men that's a harlot. That's right. They play harlots. I know some of my good putties and pals. I know how we used to get down. <laughs> Thank God delivered us. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they promote you to try to be a harlot. Uh -huh. They don't want to tell it. Yes, it goes both ways. But once again, I like this part because then she said, look here, make a promise to me that you won't do nothing to me and my family. She said, I hid y'all and I done told y'all. She said, when they leave, she gave them a way to get out. But here's the thing about Rahab. Rahab wasn't saved or sanctified just yet. Just yet. Y'all better catch this. She wasn't saved just yet. But she recognized the spirit of God that was on the spies to help them and do something. So that means whatever she was at, the devil didn't have her enough to keep her from doing what God asked her to do. So some of y'all acting like these folks out here in the streets ain't got no, they know some Jesus. It's been somewhere on them. They're just waiting for the right person to come and activate it in them. And you act like you ain't got no power to go talk to them. Who cares? Go talk to them. This is what it says. They said, look, you leave this scarlet thing out and keep your family inside. Don't let them be out and about running the streets. Keep them inside. Mm -hmm. And we will save them. Now, hold on, hold on. As long as they're inside the house, mm -hmm. they'll be safe. If anybody come in and kill them, it'll be on us. Mm -hmm. But if they're out in the streets, they fair game. Mm -hmm. And she said, okay. But she knew about God. Mm -hmm. So God used her. And it says that when they got back, we know they took over the city of Jericho. But as a result of this, Rahab was saved. Yes. And that means she started searching the Israel. And Rahab's family was saved. Amen. But we're talking about the harlot. Okay. So now we're going to get to the, the, the harbinger, which is the noun. I have to give you a definition. It says something that foreshadows a future event. Something that gives an anticipatory sign of what is to come. One that initiates a major change to the pioneer. Now somebody uh, trying to go around and figure out what harbingers was. I wasn't sure where God wanted me to go with this. Mm -hmm. It says in the Bible... Heartbreakers are considered prophets, signs, or omens from the judgment or warnings from God. In other words, it's a warning of God. It's a way to shake you up and get you back to him. And repentance and revival should take place. Mm. Now, sometimes we need to heed the word of the Lord, especially when it comes from our prophets. Mm. Why are you saying this? Mm. Because when we receive the warning, that means judgment is waiting if you don't change what you're doing. And sometimes we miss the fact that judgment can come to our house because we don't want to change what we're doing. Amen. And we act like it's because, now listen, I understand this, and I'm, God's got me going right here, and sometimes it's irregardless of your title. If God is dealing with you on a certain thing, and let's say First Lady or whoever's up here, Pastor, prophesied, look, I love you, but if you don't change, this is what's going to happen. You can't get offended in saying, I told you my business. Because God put something in their mouth to give you a warning. Now, listen, listen. It's funny to me how harbingers come. We good when they say God going to bless you with a new house. If some of us wanted a spouse or a, or a wife or a husband, oh, yeah, we shout the walls down. Shout everything. I mean, we, we, we'll roll on the floor. We'll have snot and stuff coming out of our mouth. I mean, we will go till we tire. We horse in our voice the next day. But when we hear the word that says, maybe you need to leave this young lady alone. Maybe you need to leave this young man alone. Maybe you need to get another job. Maybe God has already set something up for you. You act like you're fearful. You get an attitude. Now you want to tell, I don't want to do it. No, God said that. But the omen came. And then when you, when the judgment comes, now you want us to pray hard for you. Now you want us to fast and do everything else for you. But you didn't heed the warning. Rahab heard the warning. Rahab said, they come to take this city. Some of y'all, I would consider her a logical, smart person. Okay. She said, wait a minute. They done whooped out. This. Hold on. I done been to Jordan. They whooped them people out. I thought they was bad. Uh, 
Hold on, hold on. You said he parted the Red Sea? Yeah, I heard about it. The big Red Sea? Mm -hmm. I done went there a couple times on the beach. You talking about that sea? He parted that sea for them? Mm -hmm. she, she probably started scratching her head. Mm -hmm. And them idols in Jericho ain't did none of that for me. Oh, come on. Ooh, y'all said y'all from Israel? That's yeah. where y'all from? Yeah. You know what? I'm, I'm going to get on this blessing early. All right. Get on it. And forget all that. Y'all y'all the harbingers that's coming into the city. I'm going to heed the judgment because God already passed judgment. You said he's going to give you the city. I want to be part. I want to eat. Yeah. Where, where were they at? I don't know. I haven't seen nobody. They came and left. They probably, some of y'all would have probably thought they did something with Rahab. Mm -hmm. They chased after them. Couldn't find them. Then she said, let that, hold on, and, and here's what I like about this. God strategically set it up because Rahab is one of the people that had his, she, her place was a window in the city. Okay. Somebody else's house didn't have a window in the city. So that means, you know, God already had it set up and lined up for them to do what they had to do to have an opening. Yes. But some of y'all, once again, we act like we can't go talk to people. Mm -hmm. okay. What did Pastor preach on Bible study? You better know you got power. Mm -hmm. You got to know you got power. Yes, you better know you got power. And now we're about to be done. We're going to talk about a hostage. Because mm -hmm. wow. I asked God, I said, where are we going with this? Okay. You know, I'm trying to figure this out. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, God, what you want to talk about a hostage? Because mm -hmm. do you want to talk about people being hostage? Uh -huh. Because the Bible talks about people being hostage to sin. Okay. And then it talks about God setting you free. Okay. Romans 7, 4 and 6. Now, I got the message in the passage. So I highlighted a few. It says, when Christ died, so many friends, this is something what has taken place with you. When Christ died, he took the entire rule-dominated way of life down with him and left it in the tomb, leaving you free to marry a resurrection life and bear offspring of faith for God. For as long as we live that old way of life, doing whatever we felt, we can get away with sin. Sin was calling us most of the shots as the old law called him to sin. This made us all the more rebellious. In the end, all we had to show for was miscarriages and stillbirths. But now that we're no longer shackled to that domineering made of sin and out from under all the oppressive regulations, we're free to live a new life in the freedom of God. The passage in Israel says, so my dear brothers and sisters, the same principle applies to your relations with God. You died first to your first husband, the law, by being co-crucified with the body of the Messiah. So you are now free to marry another, the one who was raised from the dead so that you may now bear spiritual fruit. And the last part says, so now that we may serve God by living in the freshness of a new life in the power of the Holy Spirit. Sin has some people hostage. And what you need to understand is this is part of the going forward of the assignment knowing you got power. You're going to have to set some people free. You're going to have to tell them, look here. I thought I, when I was in the truck, I said, do you want me to tell them people to exchange chains? And I was like, no, 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 no. No, no, you don't want to tell them to exchange chains. You want to tell them to take the chains off of sin and be free with Christ. Because whatever your key put you in, it's easy and it's burdens light. That's what the Bible says. So you need to be set free from chains. So you need to stop being a harlot. And when the heartbreaker comes, you need to heed the word so you can stop. You can be free and stop being a hostage. Okay. The only time you need to be a hostage is if the Holy Spirit got you. The definition of hostage says a person held by one party in a conflict as a pledge, pending the fulfillment of an agreement. A person taken by force to secure the taker's demands. This is the part I like. One that is involuntary control by an outside influence. Mm. So what outside influence are you allowing to control you? Mm, to hold you hostage. Okay. And it ain't the Holy Ghost setting you free. Mm -hmm. When I say hostage, that means when you get ready to do something, y'all y'all seen that meme from TikTok when they go, you get ready to post something, you hear that voice talk about, take it down, take it down. Mm -hmm. That's not represent me. Mm. Sometimes the Holy Ghost will do that to you and you ready to come out your and be in your flesh. Mm -hmm. When you get ready to go off and say something. And lay it. Don't don't you do it, Gilbert. Don't you do it. That's not a representative of me. Let's get out his lay hands on. He talking real crazy. To me. He, he, he talking crazy, but he didn't do nothing. Don't do it. Don't do it. Because I told y'all, I, I had a minimum of cussing. I, if you cuss too much, and you this close to me in my face, I'm going to get you first. I'm not going to wait for you to hit me. Now, if you caught, if you caught me slipping, I was under the influence of spirits one time. And I didn't feel it. But for the most part, if you cuss too much of me, go off, I'm gonna get you. Yeah. Ain't no point in me waiting. And what's he didn't tell me to let nobody slap you in the face and turn the other cheek? He said that's out of context. <laughs> so you ain't gonna hold me hostage and talk crazy to me. I'm about to set you in that demon from. <laughs> but I have to but God. Because here's the thing. I have to know that something. 
sometimes the spirit and the power that's in me is enough to hold that thing at bay. That's why it's going off. That's why it's trying, it's trying to put me hostage with the spirits that it, it's got in them. Right. And sometimes they legion, they as many. Right. And it wants me to get in my flesh. But if I stand spiritual, yes. it can't do nothing. Right. If I have the power, it can't do nothing. Because I've seen sometimes, we've we had it happen here. Yeah. we looking, they going on. Uh -huh. What? In the name of Jesus. <laughs> oh, 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 you need some more? In the name of Jesus. Oh, okay, hold on. Let me get the other hand. In the name of Jesus. I put both hands on you. Give me some more. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Next thing you know, they on the floor laid out. Sometimes they throw it up. And that next thing they get up, I'm delivered. Yeah, you deliver. But we need to make sure that thing don't come back on you. But see, hold on. That's the part. We still want to do what we want to do. And then when that thing comes, what the Bible say? When you clean one out. And if you don't fill it with something. The Bible's trying to be funny. It's, it's really telling you need to get filled with the spirit and the blood of Jesus. And because if you don't fill it yourself with it, it's going to come back. Seven times worse. And now we're going to have to be here. Now we know why we had watch night. You know, the little late night prayers that are trying to get you delivered. We had to spend hours to get you delivered back there. So y'all remember them days. Oh, yes, sir. Yes. We had to sit and be still. Yes, sir. Go to sleep on the chairs. Yes. While they sitting here praying yes. with this thing. It came out one Sunday, but now next up we got to spend two hours. Oh, come on. Come on. They keep going away and coming back. Come playing the harmony. Yes. And then when something happens to them, here come the harmony. Yes. Now they hostage by the wrong thing. Because let me tell you about Paul. What about him, Paul had a Roman guard mm. with him when he went to Rome. Okay. So that's the only time he was hostage. He had to, but here's the thing. Paul wanted in no chains. Mm. Paul, hold on. God flipped it so that the enemy had to provide him the protection he needed. Wow. Said so he had a Roman guard mm. escorting him mm. so he can get the Roman stand before Nero. Mm. And even then they didn't mess with him. Now eventually, yes, now that leads me to my, my, my end and close. A few points. A few points. I'm going to read them and we're going to go. You need to accept and take accountability of God's choice in you no matter where you are at. I told y'all right now, he went to Harlot. Harlot. Rahab was a Harlot. I'm trying to say the word. I don't want to say the other word. But he went to her. And hold on. Rahab was just trying to do that to feed her family. There's some people in the situation. They're only doing that because they need to feed their family. Mm -hmm. And we ready to condemn them to hell yeah. instead of giving them Christ. Mm -hmm. And then let Christ lead them and so they can do other things so they got to stop doing that to feed their family. But we got to be able to stand in it and stop calling people out, passing judgment when God didn't tell us to pass judgment on them. Mm -hmm. I don't know who that's for. Mm -hmm. You are a leader chosen by God. I know it's hard, Donna. I know it is. You messed up and married a preacher. He didn't know he was a preacher's son. I, I did give you a point. I did give you a warning. I did tell you. I come from a line. Yeah. Cousins, yeah. pastors, yeah. bishops, superintendents, yeah. deacons. I, I did tell you. Yeah. It took you home so you could meet them. <laughs> I got you back. <laughs> and you saying, I'm just going to be his wife. Uh -huh. Yeah, but you don't realize yes. that people are watching how you're my wife. What do you mean? Mm -hmm. People come to me and they say, man, I wish my wife was like yours. Hold on, brother. Hold on, brother. We go there. <laughs> Hold on. I appreciate my wife. I do. Oh, what do you mean? Where you going with this? Right. I got to make sure you ain't getting no ideas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got to, you know, we might be friends, but now we ain't going to be friends no more. Because you going somewhere you don't need to go. That's right. That's I need to check. Make sure you ain't thinking about her the way I'm thinking about her. You see how she treats me. Yeah. Now, it's up. Hey, y'all better catch this. Yeah. This, what, this is how they do. Next thing you know, they try to be coming over the house. Hold on, brother. Uh -huh. You, you, you come here to pick up? You didn't tell me. <laughs> I, I got a ring doorbell. Hold on, brother. Uh -huh. and most of my friends who respect me yeah. will call me and tell me they come about my house. That's what you're supposed to do. Because yeah. I don't want you to be no, in the wrong thing being seen. And because she's so nice and, and sweet, she just smiles. They're going to think, oh, hell, you. The next thing, no, 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 baby. We're going to shut this down right now. Yeah. But this is what happened. They look at her and they see how we work well together right. and they don't, they don't see the bad things because they ain't their business, they right. but they see the good things. Good. And now you good. think you ain't doing nothing. God already called you to do something. You're doing it. You just need to go and accept it. Because uh -huh. yes. sometimes they be, listen, other women listen to you because they be coming to you. be trying to tell them something like what's going on in your house. Uh -huh. And they see how you're living. Uh -huh. Come on. They see how you're treated. Come on. Uh -huh. And some of them have an issue with that. And they don't want to tell you, so they might try to start discourse. Uh -huh. 
But if God gets you the Holy Ghost, you'd be like, no, we don't do that. Uh -huh. Somebody called one time years ago. I remember they had problems in their marriage uh -huh. on the phone. I said, you know what? Let me let you talk to my wife because I ain't going to do all this. Because right. I, I got a cut off point and I'm about to go street on you. Uh -huh. And pass her the phone. She'd be like, why are you keeping the phone? The next thing she started talking to him. Uh -huh. And the lady was like, this and this and this and this. Uh -huh. And I heard this. What I, that's all I heard of come out of my wife's mouth. And I was good to go. I went to my room. Uh -huh. She said, well, excuse me, we don't have those problems in our marriage. Uh -huh. We communicate with one another. Uh -huh. We don't have those issues. Yes. He let me know what he's doing the way I let him know. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, now she was, you can't put me in that box. Because right. your husband was doing wrong. Uh -huh. And you think I wasn't trying to tell him to stop doing wrong. So when everything got exposed, mm -hmm. you mad at me for no reason. Mm -hmm. Then you try to cause this course because you figure if it's in my house, I got to add something to their house. Uh -huh. Y'all got to be careful how y'all listen to the people. Because yeah. they'll try to bring the hell that's going on in their house to your house. That's good. And ain't nothing going on. They try to put some hostage yeah. and it ain't supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just telling you the truth. Because this is what they do. They, do. Uh, they argue, well, how would you handle this? And they put you on the spot. Yes. Yeah. You, you didn't know I was, I, I was talking to your husband. I was trying to tell him not to mess with that girl. Right. But she kept walking around skinny and grinning, yes. and he had a knee, uh -huh. and you didn't want to meet the knee because uh -huh. you mad about something else. Uh -huh. Come on, he came to you first, yeah. and I've been telling him to stop. Yeah. But guess what? I can't tell him to do something. He grown man, he's going to do what he want to do. Yeah. But don't act like I didn't tell him. I did what God told me to do. Yeah. I set the example. Yes. You're good. Good. That's good teaching right there. Yes, it is. So how? Don't be mad. I told him. But if you had stopped doing all that arguing, uh -huh. I'm not saying that she wasn't justifying her feeling. Uh -huh. I'm just saying, uh -huh. you keep going on about the same thing. Mm -hmm. How do you expect to move forward if you keep staying stuck in the past? Mm -hmm. If you're either going to forgive somebody or you're not. You're either going to work for it or not. Uh -huh. But if you know if you're not healed, just be honest about yeah. it. Yeah. So that way he know how to work with you. Amen. Because so what happens is you keep going on, but next thing you know, this is how we have homicide, domestic violence, and then we at divorce court and you didn't need to be there. Right. Wow. That's right, Elder Dean. Wow. Because you don't want to work it out. Mm -hmm. Help us. All right. All right. Help us. So, as I was talking to my wife, yeah. you are a leader whether you like it or not. Because you, 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 you have to, these are things that happen. Yes. And people are watching you yes. and how you deal with me. Now, I ain't never, we ain't never got no crazy stuff in public. I like to mess with it though. Go Walmart to start yelling. What I say? Don't mess with it. She be like, she like, don't do that, don't do that. Then they start looking at you crazy. I like that. I'm a funny guy. I like that. Because I'll be waiting for somebody to look. You know that one thing they do like. Everything okay, man? I can mess with it. All right, number three. Remember that hard fingers to keep you on the right path and get the revival needed for you and your assignment. So sometimes y'all say, well, what the old man comes up? What am I supposed to do? You need to get right. What did Hezekiah do? Turn his face to the wall. And maybe Pastor will call for a revival soon. I don't know. But if he do, you need to be there. You need to be there. So you get revived and renewed and keep doing what God told you to do. So then when you do this, you will have a freshness and a new, renewed life in the power of the Holy Spirit. I like this part. We was watching uh, Colin Kaepernick uh, special last night. Don't ask one of my daughters started watching it, but she did. And he said, trust your power. And I said, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want him to say trust your power. I want him to say trust God. Yes. Trust God in the power that he gave you. Yes. Trust God in the power that he invested in you. Yes. Remember, you didn't choose him. He chose you. Y'all act like y'all don't know. God chose you. Some of us act like that because of our, our past mm -hmm. and our present that God still can't use us. I told you about the, I don't know why you have to go back to Rahab. Rahab probably, in other words, y'all want to pick Rahab to be the one to be used by God. Mm -hmm. But he chose Rahab. Yes, and as a result, the city of Jericho was taken. Mm -hmm. He chose Rahab. Okay. He sent the prophets to give a word. Mm -hmm. what, 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 I, know, I know David messed up, but Nathan came and told David. Right. Mm -hmm. What did he tell him? You, you done did something wrong. Mm -hmm. He said, huh? Yeah, it's you. Mm -hmm. You don't want to took that one sheep when you had a bunch of sheep. And as a result, the child is going to die. Mm -hmm. Now, I know some of y'all don't agree with that. But he told them that was God's judgment mm -hmm. to teach David a lesson. Mm -hmm. Now, David did have some more children with her, mm -hmm. but that one wasn't going to make it mm -hmm. as a result of his sin. Mm -hmm. So then what did he do? They said he was doing all that fasting and praying, trying to change. Mm -hmm. He did He did the right thing, but it was too late. Judgment mm -hmm. was passed. Mm -hmm. 
But if he had did the right thing and not got greedy, that was again. I know somebody said something. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, 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 King, what, what you looking in that bag? You looking in that bag? Something a little long, bro. <laughs> Hold on, King. You, you, got a, you got some fire in you? <laughs> you feel a little way? Make, I, hey, yo, you got one that look like you already got home. David had a bunch of wives and concubines. Let's be clear with it. Mm -hmm. So he could have just called one of his concubines and took that kid that thing. Mm -hmm. He said, all right. Let somebody else's. You need to leave it alone. It belong to somebody else. Sometimes y'all need to say. Look a little too long. Grandpa, how long, how long, how long? You better calm down. I'm trying to help somebody. I'm just saying. So, so, so. But that being said, before I, before I forget, before I forget, that God had used the bread and the harbor. And the hostage. Mm -hmm. You have to ask yourself a few questions. People say they love God. Uh -huh. And I said again, we, we good on his blessings. But, but, but do we love God when we have to complete a difficult task? Mm -hmm. Do we love God then? Okay. Do, we, do we show, how do we show God love? Mm -hmm. How we treat one another? Mm -hmm. How are we completing our assignment? Mm -hmm. Why are we making excuses? Why are we acting like we didn't, he didn't give us power to do it? Remember, this is what the word says. You didn't choose me. And I'm not saying, when, when God says that to you, I want you to be careful. Words. He's not saying that you didn't choose him when you said yes and you want to give your life right. He's saying, I already had you picked out for work. I already planted you in a place where I needed you to be for you to do what I need to happen. But it will not happen if you stay still, be fearful, and act like you ain't got no power. Sometimes you're the one that's going to change the atmosphere at the job. Yeah. Sometimes you're going to be the one to lead somebody to Christ in a place. And listen, I'm saying this so it doesn't matter what place they're in. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're at a place of, of suicide, homicide, depression, yeah. oppression. Maybe they're being a, a garden tool. You can't stop. That can't stop you from reaching them. Mm -hmm. That can't stop you from telling them, look, I'm, look, God is something different. You have, God has put something in some of you. Get these people. You are the you 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 are the inspirer that needs to come take over that city. Mm. If that person was a city, you're the one. Because guess what? The window was open for you to come in. You've been designed to go to that place, and God is. They're waiting on you to come talk to them. Mm. They're waiting on you to come witness to them. They're waiting on you. Mm. But you have to follow the instructions. We're standing. Great and mighty is our God. In other words, leaders accept responsibility. You have to accept responsibility for, hey, <clears throat> yeah, thank you, one. When you accept responsibility, you help somebody else be able to accept responsibility on where they're at in a bad place. Mm -hmm. You have to accept responsibility. Now, I ain't gonna tell you how to testify to them, because you gotta be careful with who you and how you expose what God brought you through to serve people. That, that, let me be clear with that. Be clear, sir. Because some of them will already make a judgment and use that as an excuse yep. for why they don't want to get with God. And that will not work. Because yeah. there's going to be a lot of people on judgment day. I promise you, the Bible said it. Mm -hmm. They're going to say, I cast out demons in your name. Mm -hmm. I prophesied in your name. Yeah. He's going to say, I never knew you. Mm -hmm. Depart from me. But when God chose you, he knows who you are. And he knows where you're at, even if you don't feel like it. Mm -hmm. Why? Because some days, don't get me wrong, I know how it is. You rather sleep in. Mm -hmm. You know, you might not want to pray that day. Yeah. You know, no, no praise and worship. You might not want to read the Bible. Mm -hmm. You might not want to hear Bible scripture. Mm -hmm. But I believe this. If you put something enough in you, mm -hmm. it'll come out. Come on, come on, sir. So what are you putting in you? Oh, so God. when it's time for you to deal with the harlot, Jesus. when it's time for you to be the harbinger, when it's time for you to deal with that person that's held hostage by sin, what are you putting in you that's available to pour out onto the person? Do you not know you have the power to speak life? Amen. He says, whatever you ask in the Father's name, I'll give you. So what are we asking for in the Father's name? Are we asking? I know we like to ask for physical things, but are we asking for the spiritual things? And Lord, I need some more patience. I need some more peace. I need some more of your power. Give me what 